Are ready? Hey, up and running. Okay. And hopefully without the screen flicker, right? <laughs> Alrighty, so the good news is, is this one's a lot less of a race than the presentation I did yesterday. So it should be lots of time for questions. I know we're a little bit late starting, but I'm going to go through it fairly quickly and make sure lots of time for questions. So uh, firstly, I'm really happy to actually be at a Fedora event live. I've done a bunch of these, uh, either nests or release parties and all the rest, but it's really nice to be here to meet all these people I've talked to and interacted on online. So hey, everybody. Um, <laughs> And is this not going to work? Oh, there it is, yeah. So for those who don't know, Mark Pearson, I'm the technical lead for the Lenovo Linux PC team. We do Fedora preloads on a bunch of laptops. So I'm going to do an update on the Lenovo Linux program. I will try and make it fairly Fedora specific, but um, Linux is Linux is Linux. So um, there we go. Yeah, I'm from Canada. And uh, this project has turned my hair and eyebrows white and gray. Alrighty, so just as a summary, just to bring you all up to speed on where we are on the 2024 platforms, there's roughly about 40 of them. So we do ThinkPad, ThinkStation, ThinkSenna, but we'll see them. So on the ThinkPad side of it, uh, the ones in blue are the ones we're doing Fedora on. Um, we've got a new one added, the T14 Intel, which we've not done before. That was added late, so it's not actually available yet, but we've added Fedora to that. And then the other ones should be you know, X1 Carbon, we've done previously and the T14 um, and T14S AMDs. So they will be having Fedora on. The ticks are kind of uh, so a little bit confusing because they're like, they're done. Um, there is an exception. So the Carbon Gen 12, we split into two waves. We did the initial release, and then we're doing a second release with the MIPI camera and W1, um, which is coming later. So you're not getting MIPI camera and WAN because they have closed source pieces in it. So you, the Fedora option is ready, available online, and we'll come to that in a bit. Um, and then you sort of hit frustrations. We've had a lot of issues on the AMD platforms, which are Wi-Fi related. So that's not done yet. It will be coming soon, I hope. Um, on the Think stations. Again, there's not really any surprises there for anybody who's been following this from previous pre presentations. We do full portfolio for the uh, ThinkStations, and we do Fedora. Well, we try and do Fedora on the P1 and the P16, and we also P14S uh, AMD. Uh, the P14S has got the Wi-Fi issues, so it's not ready yet. Um, P1 and the P16 are done. Uh, they all have NVIDIA cards is the big issue, and uh, I'll come to that in a bit later. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and um, we're almost uh, done with this year's releases for those. And then there's no Fedora on Think Center, ThinkBook, and, and other, but they run Linux. They run Linux well. Fedora runs well on them. I have a, a, an M70Q that I use in the basement as a media server running Fedora, and it does great. Ah, they're all done. So that's the state of play on the platforms. And oh, did I miss one? No. No, all right, maybe not. All righty, so just, just to give a summary of what's in this year's hardware, if for those who are interested, what's new and exciting. Uh, this year was Media Lake from Intel. Uh, and the nice thing is, is I was losing track as to which generation it was, 11, 12, 13. So it's the first gen with the uh, Core Ultra. So yeah, so at least I'm good for this year. Um, main thing on the Meteor Lakes is not, don't really expect any big performance bumps, but uh, it's um, more efficient. Um, on the AMD side, we've got the Phoenixes. Uh, I find the AMD numbering a little bit confusing, but for those who are interested, the 8540 and the A840, uh, AMD are continuing to do really nice work on their uh, really solid chips. They're, they're good. Um, Wi-Fi 7 is new this year. Wi-Fi 7 has been challenging. Um, so we have the Intel Wi-Fi 7 chip is all working nicely on the Intel platforms. On the AMD, it's causing us a lot of grief. The patches that are needed went into Linux Net Next two days ago. So uh, I hopefully will be doing some merge requests to get those pulled into Fedora soon. We need to do some testing, make sure it works. And we are waiting on a firmware blob to go into Linux firmware. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the new bit there. Uh, LP Cam 2 memory, it's not terribly exciting, but for those of you who hate soldered memory, this is supposed to be what is going to move vendors away from soldered on memory. So we have it on the P1 Gen 7. It's all look good. Um, I'm hoping, I really hope we see this on more platforms. Uh, MIPI camera, so this is not new, but this year is the first year that Lenovo are looking to certify on a Linux platform. Previously, we just went, no, doesn't work at all. Uh, Intel have made enough progress that it works. 
ish, kind of. The support isn't upstream. There's lots of issues with it. Uh, we can't do it in the Fedora preload because it involves closed source pieces. I I'll come to that later. But we are, for the first year, we're really trying to do a Linux, uh, a, a Linux preload offering for MIPI camera. And W1, again, isn't new, but um, we're doing it on a much wider. Uh, we're doing it on more of the portfolio, and the other thing is we're actually almost on schedule. Usually, usually W1, we're 12 to 18 months late for various reasons, but we're actually on schedule for this, and so it's, we're doing preloads with W1 support. So that, that's from sort of like a fairly um, thing. Technology challenges, and I specifically did this to be Fedora-related, just so you guys understand some of where some of the challenges are. Uh, and it's not meant to be negative, it's just, hey, this is it. So yeah, the MIPI camera, I can't do MIPI camera right now on a Fedora preload. Um, the way it is, is closed source uh, um, user space pieces uh, are needed. Uh, the good news is there is some really nice work being done in lib camera. There is a, a software version, which is open source, which is coming. So. You, you can get the camera work on Fedora. I don't recommend it. Um, but there is, there's, you know, there's light on the horizon. I don't know if it's going to be one year, two year, three year, but there's, there's, there's potential. Um, but yeah, for right now, on a preload point of view, we can't do it. Uh, the NVIDIA driver continues to be a pain. So for those who've, I presented this a few years, like every year we try and do the P1 and we fail, realistically, because the, uh, the Nuvo driver does not meet the QA standards for Lenovo, so we can't do uh, Fedora preload on anything with an NVIDIA card. This year was really close. Like, I tested it and uh, plugged in an external monitor, and it worked, which doesn't usually happen. And I did a suspend and resume, and it worked. I was like, oh, maybe this year we're going to have Fedora on the P1 and everything. And, and it's not. It's not bulletproof. It's not reliable enough. So I'm afraid. So the P1 is going to have UMA only, the P16, the UMA, and the Intel Arc. Though there was an issue in testing with the Arc. Um, so yeah, there'll be a limited offering for Fedora. But there is some really good work happening here. Maybe next year. <laughs> we will hope. Um, and W1 enablement. Um, the big issue I've got here is we have some regulatory needs. Uh, related to the FCC and uh, the US carriers. So uh, the modem is locked, and we have a closed source utility to unlock the modem. It's really annoying, uh, and I have no way around it. Trust me, I've, I've looked for one. And uh, so uh, unfortunately, it means that for the Fedora preload, we can't offer W1 on it. It's just the way it goes. Alrighty. So this is a bit people want to know about. Uh, Web sales. <laughs> so, if uh, anybody's attending my presentation of this, the web sales, I'm, I'm technical, uh, and yeah, this is this is a sort of sign. So I have some good news. Yeah. Uh, you were, hang on, no, 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 no. Before you clap, <laughs> yeah, well, we, I, I was like, good news. There's good news, bad news. Yeah. Good news, bad news. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there is more availability in North America and EMEA, and I'll get into a little bit why. Um, so we are. We, we basically, you know, working with the web teams, we're like, why are we not getting Linux online? And the US last year was terrible. So the way the US do it is you get an individual you know, platform with Linux offering, and they would tune it specifically. There's some limitations you can't have. Previously, we couldn't do W1, you can have RAID, uh, MIPI camera. There's all these limitations. And so they would, they would build a specific configuration for Linux. And that, takes them time, and we were always bottom of the pile. And we're like, this is, you know, basically, we ended up last year having very few Linux systems generally, not just Fedora. This was, you know, uh, any of them. Um, so we ended up very few. So we really focused on removing some of those limitations. It's one of the reasons there's a focus on W1. We're just trying to make it easier so that Linux is on a par with Windows. And one of the things they've done is now if you go to build your own model, there's a drop-down box. And you can have Windows, Pro, Windows Home. I don't know. I don't use Windows. Uh, and then you get the Linux options there just as part of that OS drop-down. And then the rest of it figs its way out. So what that means is they don't have to go build a new offering. And it should make it a lot easier for them. So it, the idea is, is that when we finish our certification, we say, yes, it's ready to go. It's all supposed to be enabled. Um, 
And so North America moved to that model uh, this year. So it's, it, I have to do a lot less sort of <coughs> nagging and begging to get them to enable it, which is good. Um, there is still bad news. I'm afraid. The big downside with this approach is discoverability is awful. It's, so the website, you cannot search for Linux. This, it's really stupid. Uh, so, so I shouldn't have said that. This is recorded. Um, <laughs> but, but the way the web tool works is it can't search the inside configuration. So if you search for Linux, you will not find it. It can't tell that if you go into this build config order that there will be a Linux option. It doesn't have that. So there's no way of finding out if a platform has Linux support and then if you can order it. So it was one of those. I had to make a judgment call. I was figuring it's going to be better to have systems online that you can actually do uh, but are hard to find rather than just not having them at all. But there's work to be done to improve this. I, I hope it happens. It's obviously it's, it's out of my hands somewhat, but uh, I do want to call that out. Anybody who complains that it's really hard to find the systems, yes. Um, honestly, the other bit that I've been a bit disappointed, so when I would talk to them, the whole point of doing this was it was supposed to be automatic. We'd enable the config, it goes through the process, yada, yada. It would just show up and we wouldn't, you know, really, I, I spent a lot of time nagging web teams saying, hey, can you do this? Can you do this? And that still seen problems realistically, uh, and I don't yet understand why. Um, so it's better. There's still work to be done. I'm, and you know, I, I can't promise you anything. I do. I don't know if I'm going to be brave enough to do it. I did pull up, like, you can go buy the X1 Carbon with Fedora in, uh, now <laughs> in Canada and England. Now, for some reason, it's not showing up in the US. I got to go figure that one out. It should be. The Canadian US site's the same. Uh, and for some reason, it's not showing up in Europe. And like, I try the French pages. It's really weird. There's some strange stuff going on. But we still have a lot. I'm sorry. still have a lot of work to do here. All right. So that's the web sales update. Um, I just wanted to do a quick shout out uh, to the Fedora marketing team. Oh, we're down 10 minutes already. Holy moly. Um, just thank you. They've been great to work with. And uh, Fedora community are awesome. So. I had some questions for you guys. I've got 10 minutes. I'm going to get to questions. But I had some questions for you guys. I wanted to ask. So can't, we're not going to be able to cover this all in 10 minutes, but come talk to me. So I wanted to know if we're targeting the right platforms. Uh, is Matthew, uh, yeah, Matthew said, when we originally set this up, we were targeting developer platforms. And you know, we, that's why the P1 and the X1 Carbon are in there. Um, I can't share sales numbers, but they're kind of low. Uh, and I just wanted to know, are we targeting the right platforms? We did the AMD because we had requests for AMDs. And I just want to know, what are people looking for? Um, come talk to me. Tell me. I, I, I genuinely would like to know if we're targeting the right stuff. Um, so you went there, doesn't it? Yeah. OK. Um, this one's more controversial. Uh, so we've got the challenges, NVIDIA, MIPI, W1. NVIDIA, MIPI, there is light on the horizon, I hope. Might be one year, two year, three year, but that, honestly, that's it. W1, I don't have a solution for it. There was an idea floated about doing a remix. I'm super, super proud of our Fedora preload because it is Fedora untouched, it, as it is, and I'm really proud of that. But there was the idea floated about, hey, do a remix and put in these closed source pieces. Is there a way that we could do that where people would be like, yeah, that's OK. We get what you're doing. I don't know. I'd like to have that conversation and see. It's not something I'm pushing for. But if there's any feedback and if it's just like, hell no, no, that's not what we want, I'm OK with that. But I'd like to have that conversation and say, because there are some challenges that we've had and would like to know. Uh, it's only four questions. Third one, this one's more minor, uh, PC tools. Is there anything that people feel are missing? We work really hard to try and narrow the gap on what Windows has. Um, I get asked constantly, like, when are you going to have Vantage for Linux? So Windows has the Vantage tool. And I look at it and go, it doesn't make sense. Like, Vantage offers firmware updates, and we have LVFS for that. And they do driver updates. And it's like, well, no, it's all part of the kernel. Uh, you can go check your warranty status. So like, well, OK, fair enough. Um, there's some thought about maybe putting in some battery management tools. There's stuff which maybe should be added to GNOME or KDE, but that process is challenging in itself. Anyway, open question. If there's stuff, you know, configuring your haptic touchpad doesn't exist anywhere right now. But anyway, so I'd like to, if the, you guys are using them. What do you find is missing? 
What do you want? And the last one is <laughs> AI! AI! Yay! Yeah, no, I, I know, yeah. So I have to be honest, I don't know where I... Yeah. <laughs> it's very hard to have a conversation without AI involved these days. It's really hard. I actually think Linux has real potential here to do something that is privacy-focused uh, and that you can trust and that is not sending data. So I think Linux has real potential. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know. You. So I've been really, I've been attending a few of the talks and I know, for, I think Fedora is doing the right things, but you know, let me know if there's things we can be involved with. You are going to start seeing laptops with NPUs on them, local processing. I think there's real opportunities of doing some really interesting things and Linux is well placed to do it, to have that trust that I don't think anybody else can do. Um, for that. So five minutes left. I have some stats things. I'll skip those. Let me say any questions first, because it's more important for me to hear from you than stats things. Adam. Hey, Mark. It's good. Is this on? Yeah, it is. Okay. It's good to meet you at the conference. Yes, Great I know. that you're here. Thanks you're, you're a lot. <laughs> Thanks for all the stuff. On we really appreciate everything you're doing. I just wanted to say that first. You talked about. I've been trying to follow. Um, hardware this year, and it's been a nightmare. You, I believe you talked about Meteor Lake and AMD's kind of first half Q4 new hardware. I believe they both have new, new refreshes coming out. There's Luna Lake, and mm -hmm. AMD has like Gen 5, Zen 5 slash AI 300 or something they're calling it. Oh, no, the What's going the, on with those? Uh, so I, I'm not allowed to talk about future platforms. Okay. So, that's certainly not what I've been recording. Can you talk vaguely <laughs> about non-specified future platforms yes. from your hardware partners? Yeah, so no, there's definitely, there's a big focus on, what's it, the, the namies, but yeah, you're going to start seeing NPUs uh, showing up, and yeah, the, Linux is included in all the future programs. I can't tell you what and how. I'm slightly nervous because we try and meet the same ship date as Windows, and this is going to be a big change. But uh, yeah, no, it's coming. What about ARM? Uh, yeah, no, I, I thought about putting slides about ARM in. So we did the X13S as a proof of concept last year. I, I, I don't know, I, I really, really wanted the new T14S to be part of the Linux program. It is not. Uh, and the reason is, is Qualcomm are not ready to commit to Linux support. I think, I think I'm allowed to say that. I'm going to say that out loud publicly. Um, so they're not ready. They've done a lot of work. I don't want to throw them under the bus or anything. They've done a lot of work. But it's a very, going from proof of concept to something that we can sell to customers and stand behind and support and expect, uh, you know, a proper experience, there's a jump there. I really hoped they were going to be ready to make it that jump this year. They're not. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how we do something. I kind of put a lot of eggs in getting it into the Linux program and didn't. Um, but yeah, so I think the ARM platforms look really interesting, right? There's, there's some great technology in there. I think there's going to be some, they'll, they'll, they'll get added eventually, not this year. So. Um, I wanted to ask, which challenges do you have with uh, Dolby one? Sorry, I Dolby Van. Like double V double V A N, um, network. network. Yeah, network uh, oh, mobile the, broadband. So on W N specifically. Yes. So I covered this a little bit in talk yesterday. So uh, the main issues there is um, so we have to lock it to meet the FCC requirements, and so in the U S before we can enable W N we have to certify it with the three carriers with AT T T Mobile Verizon, and. Uh, so even though the rest of the world gets impacted by this, but we have a little utility, FCC W unlock. It's on GitHub. Um, like the utility is there, but it's a closed. There's a bunch of libraries in there that are closed source, um, and basically that just goes in and says, I am this modem on this piece of hardware. I have been certified. I'm allowed to do this. And like right now, if you go get the utility, it won't work in the U.S. It says, Oh, I'm not in the U.S. Uh, I work. I'm in the U.S. It just and we can't do it as open source because you just hack the hell out of it. Um. <laughs> right, but the problem with that is that this. So, so the issue is that getting that utility into Linux without being open source, or yeah. Well, no. So for Fedora specifically, no, no closed source at all, right? So I can't package it. I can't include it. So, which is fine. That's you know that's we understand that. Uh, so Linux generally, I will say, packaging that utility was very hard. 
Uh, we tried Snap, we tried Flatpak, we tried doing it on the Lenovo website. Uh, we, we, we now got it on GitHub as a tarball. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, it's closed source and we know that and we know it's not what anybody wants. So you could take some back of your help? Uh, you can't package it, right? How are you going to, they would be refused from any of the... No, uh, I mean, well, there, there are some other repositories that accept non-free utilities. Sure. But it's something. Yeah, it's something, yeah. I'll you. Hey, so uh, you were saying there were a lot of struggles with the website, and I've, not I've noticed one in particular. Uh, if you go and try to look for all of the laptops, you can't sort by operating system, at, or yeah. you can, but it's it not there. Yeah, it doesn't work. Now, this is it. The discoverability is horrible. And you sit there and think you should be able to click on Linux and go to it. Yeah. It, it doesn't. That's, yeah. a, that's really interesting. That's, I mean, it's outside my scope. It's not my team. But yeah, that's a website issue. It's, it's really unfortunate. Yeah, I was just interested. So uh, let's take one last question from Kevin. and. I'll be real quick. Uh, I have the uh, Slim 7X, the Snapdragon laptop. Oh, you there. do? It probably And works. it almost boots Fedora. Almost. So I heard, they, I heard they got Linux up and running on it. I heard from the Lenovo Yeah, team, there are some working. folks that do have it running. Yeah. Uh, I can boot the kernel, and the user space starts booting, and then it resets. So there's some module or something that it's loading okay. that's, that's I, wrong. I heard they had it up and running, so I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So it is early days, but I really hope that we're going to see this you know, next year or, or something. So, yeah. yeah. I hope so. All right, I think I'm out of time, even though I started yeah, late. Le, we, yeah. we have to wrap it up. OK. Um, yeah, if anyone the slides, I had some statistics just based on a year's worth of collecting issues, if anyone reads them. LVFS is an amazing project. Uh, questions, we've already done that bit. If you want, please come talk to me at the conference. Really want to hear from you. Uh, my Fedora ID is M Pearson. You can go get me on Element Matrix, whatever it is. Uh, email, uh, put in the ats and the dots. If anybody was using the Mark Pearson at Lenovo.com, I stopped using that because it's an Outlook account and it was a nightmare. So I've switched to using my personal one. But that, that will get to me. I get a lot of emails. So if I don't respond, you know, please, please nag. Yeah. Already. Thanks, everybody.